Hello Taurus, welcome to the Plaid Sheep Oracle. For this round of readings, I've been pulling a card from the Divining Poets and the Emily Dickinson edition. You got Trust the Unexpected. Now, if you watched the uh, New Moon in Virgo, all signs reading, if you watched yourself, Taurus, you know that that there is an awakening, an awakening genius happening. That maybe you're going to see something that you had not seen before. And I am having this feeling, this is actually the third time that I've started your video. <laughs> um, due to kind of getting messed up or lost. So hopefully third time's the charm and we'll make it all the way through. But there's there's something about that. About maybe things not starting well, maybe having to restart things, things, you know, being awkward in some way, confused. We begin in the visible underlying with this Prince of Wands. And he does have this chariot, but he's linked with Leo. And Leo is a fixed sign. Uh, in this Thoth deck, the princes, who are the knights in other decks, are actually linked with the fixed signs. And the knights who live in the king position um, are the uh, the mutable signs, more mobile, more active. The knights are the more active, faster moving energy. Because this does feel sort of slow movement. But at the bottom of the deck, we have this completion card of the Four of Wands. And then we have the Ten of Wands, which is another kind of completion energy, a Ten. Through the whole reading, there's this sense of both, or actually maybe like three things going on, that something is coming to a completion Something else seems to be part way. And then there's also a sense of a new beginning, kind of not yet visible entirely. So rather than there being kind of a very orderly, something finishes, something begins, that is not going on here. And, and we know that life isn't really like that. We often talk, you know, in readings, oh, you know, a cycle is completing and then the next thing. But in life, stuff generally doesn't really work like that. Things are going on in, at different rates and in different ways. So here we have the first sense of the new with this page of wands. this uh, starting energy, this inspiration. And then we have the Empress. And this feels, this feels like a kind of manager energy. And it may indeed be Venus. She has met up in aspect with all of the big outer planets, most recently in a trine with Pluto. So she may have, she may be the one who has the kind of global view of what is happening with Taurus.
And I want to say that it is she who has dispatched this Knight of Cups. Sending this, this energy to you. And it's kind of especially odd in this deck because there is this um, reference to Cancer who is normally associated with the Queen of Cups. But here in this night, and there is something about cancer. Cancer sort of came up in one of the confused beginnings that I abandoned. And cancer's connection to Leo. Um, Mars is going to, when Mars does his retrograde starting in early December, he's going to move from Leo into Cancer. And he spends about four months total, a little bit more, maybe four and a half, between when he enters Cancer the first time and then the retrograde period. And Cancer is sextile Taurus. It's a kind of working partnership. So it seems like this Mars retrograde is significant to you. That there is some, you know, because Venus has, uh, she's squared Mars, she's going to trine Mars later. So there's something Something about a message that Venus is sending through Mars and that you're going to get via Cancer. So this all, right, this all seems complicated and it may be that this is a particular person. It's quite possible that this Knight of Cups, maybe they, maybe it's someone who has a strong Cancer presence, someone who has Mars in Cancer, perhaps. Um, someone you know who either has strong Cancer energy or just feels like that, who's gonna show up with some sort of message for you, Taurus. Or it may be that you receive this message in, in a Mars-like way. Um, through something uh, active, something young, something that, you know, sort of shoots into your life. I don't know, you're going to find out, Taurus. The next card is Justice. And this, right, this card has this feeling of not, that things are complicated, that there's, Right, a bunch of things are going on and we don't know. Um, I was speaking in the Virgo New Moon reading about the fact that Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto are in this little harmonious triangle of trine and sextile. And that's, right, that's a heady kind of combination, those three <laughs> together. And in this partnership, easy movement of energy formation. So whatever they kind of come up with together, it's probably going to happen very smoothly, but it might still, but it might not feel that way. Because underneath this card, we have this home away ship on the waves. And then at the bottom of this deck, Cancer reappears again with the Chariot card and also this sense of movement. And right, these two horses are kind of butting heads here. That there may be a sense of a little bit of chaos. Uh, Mars 
can certainly have that. Can bring, if it brings a very fast moving energy and you're unprepared for it. Can feel chaotic. Because we also have this, this is one of my favorite cards in this deck, this kaleidoscope card of this person who has transformed into butterflies. I think that you are, right, that, that awakening genius that showed up in the New Moon reading may in part be about the ability to, to be um, more, right, more flexible maybe more Gemini that you need to, to, you know, call on that Gemini energy that's next to you and maybe the Aries energy on the other side to have a more flexible uh, stance. But that something, something will become clear. There is this feeling, but then, right, something will emerge as a primary focus. And this may happen more than once. That that different, different things, different events, different people, different things, stuff, will become the priority at different times. So there may be period, there may be a period where you're kind of touching everything, right, in this kaleidoscope card, and then periods where you're focusing on just one thing. And then we have a kind of a double ending here. We have this 10 of pentacles with you climbing out of something that is complete. So the something that completes, I wanna say is going to be the first thing that happens. That this completion. And it may be, you know, it may not be that you complete, it could, it could be that you complete a project or you come to the end of a contract at a job. Um, you know, or your lease is coming to an end and you decide to move. But it may also be that some mental slash emotional slash spiritual thing that you've been working on comes to a completion. Because then we have the world card. So there is a kind of global feel to this. That this ending isn't simply one item. that the ending uh, is a kind of, is a kind of global ending. There is with the 10 of Pentacles also this, this physical feel. It could very well be a place. And I wanna say that if you are done with a place, that you're moving somewhere far away. That it's not like your apartment in this neighborhood is coming to an end and so you're moving, you know, to the neighborhood next over. I don't think that it's like that with the world card. Um, or if it's, you know, an ending of a job, it is really, it's like not just the job, but the whole profession. You know, you've been a lawyer for 20 years and you are finished, you're, you're just, right, you're not just leaving the law firm, you're going 
into a completely different field. But it does seem, well, <laughs> let me just go on. So now we have this six of air and this feels, I mean, that was just 15, 15. There are a lot of sixes. There's three sixes here. And 15, 15 is six, six. So this six of air, and this is the first part, something part way done card. Something is, you're, you've flown halfway or maybe just a little bit past halfway on this crow, but there's still, right, there's still journeying to be done. Now under that is the page of earth, the second feeling of something new. All right, we have three pages total coming up. There's the princess of wands, there's this page of earth, and then there is this page of water. So this also, right, all of this feels, um, it does feel very earthy, real, like it is stuff in your life. Um, but the sense of the fire, maybe about inspiration. Um, and there is some air stuff as well coming up here at the bottom of the deck. We have the first air card as the Ten of Air, another completion. So we have had the Ten of Wands, the Ten of Pentacles, the Ten of Air, of Swords. Next to that is the Fool, right behind it, waiting in the wings. And then there's the six of earth, another six. And here also this sense of something that's in process, right? I wanna say that there's been this, maybe there's, you know, a grayness or, or just an emptiness of something. And then this whole floral thing is, is moving through. So the sense of the halfway. And we have Temperance, who here is also feeling like a kind of overseer or conductor energy. Uh, this may be Venus showing up again a little bit, uh, or it could be, could be your own wider self. Right, there's a sense of the conductor here, right, with arms raised, uh, conducting the orchestra. And then the last six, the six of fire. And this too, right, there's a halfway sense that this, this ring of fire is a little bit more than halfway. Ooh. but there's still a little bit more to complete it. And I don't know if these things are connected. There certainly is a sense that, right, with the fool in waiting at the bottom of the deck, um, that the fool does kind of is waiting for whatever this completion is. But then I don't really know how the halfway point is connected. I think it may actually be something else. That there is, that the fool and the, 
and the 10 completion energy are connected to one another. So if this is, you know, leaving a job and a profession, then the fool is that new, the new job, the new profession. Or the place that you move to. And that this, whatever the halfway thing is, may have some connection to those things, but it feels more like its own thing. Um, then we have this five of pentacles. And this also feels less today like two people that are left out and more like two people that are waiting. It's like they're waiting to be called, you know, they've, um, you know, maybe they've put their name on a list at the reception desk or they've taken a number or, you know, they've checked in, whatever they've done, they're, they're waiting for their name or their number to be called. And that seems, again, they could be actual people that you're going to, you're going to meet and they kind of, you know, their, their number is called whenever you enter the building. Um, you know, they get paged and they show up. Or this could be events or things that show up when the time is right. We have at the bottom of the deck a repeat of the page of fire. This page of combustion. So I think, I think this is associated again with with this beginning ending thing. Um, because we also have the tower showing up. And then below that, this nine of aether. And I'm gonna go one more, um, this 10 of combustion, which is the 10 of wands repeating. And then maybe I'll go one more still. Oh, I have to go two more still. We have the ace of tentacles the Ace of Cups, and then Justice showing up again, and here being much more together, right? She doesn't have a bunch of arms that are doing all kinds of things. She's, and she's together. So you may be having, you know, this, this move, this completion, and then the new beginning may be feeling um, anxious, right? It may feel like a tower moment. You are, it, whatever it is, it is a big move. Whether it's into a new profession or into a whole new living situation or across the country or into a new country. Um, Whatever it is, is, is big. It's a big change. It might be, you might be getting married. Um, you know, perhaps somebody hasn't asked you yet. Maybe, maybe cancer is going to show up and ask you to get married. Let's get married. And so right, you, you end your life as a single person. You enter into something, you know, where you really are in a shared situation. Right, then we have the aid of combustion. More of this energy. And the world repeating as the ending. So this, right, this beginning ending. And it may be that this is what's really, right? It's, it's taking up much more space in the reading. 
Um, whatever this in-between thing is, it's kind of just this one line here. Just these sixes coming out as this in-between thing. Now it could be, since we are having air as the mind and the water, um, and the fire is the most visible aspect, and because this six, you know, has a real sense of self, of transforming self, maybe that's the thing that's halfway. Um, I mean, that could connect up then to the beginning and the end, or the end and the beginning. Because if you are, if you're feeling as if you haven't completed your own transformation into the kind of person who is married, into the kind of person who has this new profession, then that may be part of what's giving you this anxiety, <laughs> this right feeling of the tower, um, the fact that this waiting in the wings energy is coming out as the five of earth, which can be, you know, anxiety. You know, what if I'm ready for, not ready for this new profession? I feel only sort of halfway. All right, so we have this five of ether. And I want to say that in this scenario, you are the bird here. And there's all these other birds. There's this kind of sense of a little, right? There's a sense of chaos of things going on that, that are out of your control. Maybe if you're right, if you're wanting to be this, and you're doing your best, but as Taurus, you really feel more comfortable as this. And then this person is your wider self. Who absolutely has your back, right? You are not just out there exposed. Uh, you are not alone. What is happening um, is being managed, right? This Venus energy, this conductor, this um, hunter energy. This is not haphazard. There is, right, there is a through line. Your wider self, your guides know where you're going. They can see the whole through line. So your job, Taurus, is to trust. Oh, we knew it was going to come out. to make these choices really genuinely blindfolded. If there is an impulse to do something that you don't ask why, even in a divination sense. Um, I have been receiving this kind of message. Um, you know, I had this, I've been having this experience with bees. Bees appearing in art. Uh, I was sitting, waiting outside for a bit and this bee seemed absolutely obsessed with me. <laughs> um, and it happened again on, an, on another occasion. Um, just bees showing up. Um, and so I, you know, I asked the cards, what, what is this about bees? And I could not see clearly. So essentially the answer was, don't ask. Just, you know, if you 
when you meet a bee in, in whatever form, what do you feel? What are you inspired to do when you meet the bee? There is no need for you to ask and to know the whole inner workings of the thing. Because it might just distract you. Right? This is about trust, about making choices truly blindfolded. You know, and actually, I'm looking at this card now. She's got this yo-yo. And I think it's the moon. Or at least it's looking like the moon today. So again, this sense of cancer, also this Virgo new moon. Um, there is going to be a Taurus full moon later in the fall, uh, in November. So there may be something about that. Because the moon actually was also here. If I had kept going past justice, there was also the moon. Advice. So this grace card has been coming out a lot. And I think that it wants to, in conjunction with the gratitude and the uncertainty cards that are under it, and actually, oh, I'm just seeing the protection card. There's several things. One, right, to trust in the unexpected, to trust also in grace. Right, to trust that these energies are with you. Also to move with grace. To see yourself as graceful. I think that sometimes that's not a word that would necessarily be associated with Taurus. People think of the bull, right? The bull in the China shop. But you are Venus. And Venus is graceful. Venus is grace. Um, right? And then the, right, the, the, the gratitude to appreciate, to be in, a, in an energy of gratitude and appreciation for all that shows up, right? To hold the uncertainty and to know that there is protection, but you have to be open to it. That's the, the little sort of caveat. If you kind of energetically refuse it, right, then it's not there. Accept the protection. Um, the bottom of the deck has this purification energy. And I want to say that this is, you know, not that you have to be pure in all of your dealings or your words or anything else, but that you have to have kind of a, a purity of intention, I guess, that that you want your right to intend the best for yourself. That you're going to be open to the best for yourself. And then we have energy, right? Holding these, these fires, ready to use them when inspiration strikes. And in that fiery way where you don't get caught up in needing all the reasons why and wherefore. But, right, you act when the inspiration comes. And then wisdom. Knowing, knowing that you have it. Um, I'm thinking now, you know, the owl is Athena's bird. And in a different deck, in the Ancestral Path Tarot deck, uh, Justice is Athena. And Pallas Athene, the asteroid, 
is just completing her time in Scorpio across the way from you. She has been sitting in opposition to, Tor to the uh, Uranus in Taurus, providing, right, providing a strategic voice to this, right? She's trining Pluto now. Um, or rather sextiling Pluto, trining Neptune. So she, the strategic voice, is there, even what may appear with Uranus and Neptune in the game, like chaos. So there is trust, trust, trust. Oh, Taurus. And then we have the secret spring success. Believe in the success, even if at the moment it seems hidden. Uh, believe that whatever this six, sixes halfway point thing is, or feels like halfway to you, it could be that you're farther along than you know. You know, it might be that you're really at like the eight, but it feels like the six. That it, that it's doing its thing. It's coming into its completion. You don't have to micromanage it. And that it may be that it needs whatever the new thing is to really come into completion as well. You know, if you've had, if we take the marriage example, and you've had some issues with commitment or um, with intimacy or, you know, your, how you attach to people, you can help yourself a lot. But often the final sort of healing space needs to be done in relationship. So it may be that, right, that this big step, well, you know, whether it's marriage, maybe it's moving in with somebody, really committing um, but I think it's a real, a real commitment, you know, not just a kind of let's try it out <laughs> thing. Um, right. Those, those last couple of steps are taken in relationship. And if you trust, right, if you trust in Venus, if you trust in your wider self, if you allow yourself to be guided without micromanaging that, then these sixes can come to their completion. So trust in the unexpected, Taurus. <laughs> Whatever is going to show up is part of the plan, even if you can't see it. I wish you the very, very best, Taurus in all of this. And I will see you next time. So long.